about his immunizations. <laughs> Cambodia is an amazing place. Everywhere you turn and everyone you bump into has a simultaneously heartbreaking and heartwarming story to tell. Allow me to tell you one. To get there, we have to follow Princess Armin Norodom through a claustrophobically narrow alley. To this, an entire community living on top of the city's sewerage runoff. It's so hot here, it's so hot. Um, people live here, you know, like they live here. No air conditioning. This place right here behind me has no floor. Um, super, super sad. This baby's only two months old. He was born here. This lady lives in here with her sister. They both have babies. This baby's father died of cancer during the pregnancy. She's already had to move on for financial reasons. Ermin comes down here three times a week to help the families who are prepared to help themselves. She gives selflessly, kindly, heart-wrenchingly. It's 9 a.m. on a Monday and the men are drunk. Surrounded by their starving children, they ask us for beer money. Most of the children Ermin works with will get out of the slum and make a life for themselves. Others will not. A few kilometers away, another slum. Mayra de Lima, a missionary from Brazil, introduces us to the family she cares for. This is the kitchen. Their house is built on top of a graveyard and cared for by a 64-year-old lady known only as Mama. All of the children in her care have terrifying pasts. The old lady has nothing. She is the epitome of dirt poor. Every day she scours the area looking for recycling that she sells for food money. One day while looking through garbage she heard a baby crying. He was tied inside a plastic bag, thrown out with the trash. The boy is now four. Thousands of babies a year don't get so lucky. Over the river we meet another saint, Tony Gierhartz, a Belgian man who came to Cambodia over ten years ago and cannot bring himself to leave. He has built a beautiful home for 36 orphans rescued and adopted from the local neighborhood. Tony has dedicated his life to the children of Cambodia. Like Mayra and Ermin, the love and care emanating from him is palpable. You can feel it. It's moving. Like any father, Tony wants the best for his children. He was tired of them walking to school through garbage, so he single-handedly created the Cake Project. We want to set an example for uh, other villages. And the whole objective, the whole aim is to clean four villages, to uh, maintain those uh, villages. We hired 50 sanitation workers. We placed disposal cages on central locations in those four different villages. Because we start with empty those cages three times a week, and we are now at 10 times a week. It's one thing to clean and maintain those villages. It's even more important and more difficult to change the mindset of the villagers. And after six months, I'm very, I'm very proud. So you're doing the same job that a city council yeah, should be doing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We also need the authorization from the government, and that's another part I'm working on right now. You know, it's, it takes a long time with everything in Cambodia, but uh, we're very optimistic that it's, it's going to work. It needs to work. It has to work. And it's working on the ground, operational-wise. It is working. It's amazing. But we need more support, and we need a collaboration with, uh, with the government. As you watch this, the cake project is dying. Tony can no longer fund it himself and the government has all but ignored his pleas to take over. The help needed in this country is intimidating, never ending. Yet here are four people who have made a massive impact on an entire community. They certainly made a lasting impact on us. So we spent an entire day helping every person we could. (laughs) 
We finished the day by taking Tony's kids for some fun at Kid City and a five-star pizza dinner on the 19th floor of our hotel. Hopefully one day, when they have their own money, they remember that benevolence is so much more valuable than greed.